In the news tonight, drowning of suspected COVID case under investigation. Over 60 villages in Kandahu screened and assessed. And food security will not be an issue for Maritime Islands. From the studios of FBC Suba, Edwin Nani. Fiji. Villages of Yangeta in Yasawa are on high alert after a man who drowned last week Thursday tested positive for COVID-19. The victim, a 50-year-old man from the village, drowned uh, rather was being taken to the Lotoka Hospital following the incident for post-mortem and swabbing. Turangi Nikoro Apisai Rangele says the swab results of the deceased returned positive. Josiah Nanunga reports. A sudden twist of a full-speed fiberglass boat forced the 50-year-old man to jump overboard and efforts to resuscitate him proved futile. The incident has ignited a shocking revelation for the Angeta villagers. We were really shocked when we received the news last week. He was well, but we heard that he was experiencing respiratory distress a few days before the incident. His body was transported back to the village last Saturday and he was taken from the landing site straight to the burial ground without any protocols or ritual. Now this was done under the careful watch of the Fiji police force. Apise Rengele says the risk of community transmission is fair. However, they haven't imposed any strict lockdown measures in the village. At the moment, we haven't imposed any lockdown protocols. We are expecting a team of health officials to visit our village over the next few days and we will take our cue from them. Permanent Secretary for Health Dr. James Fong says the death of the suspected case has alerted the Nabula Health Center on the possible presence of COVID-19 in their medical area. We saw, we saw one case in Yasawa, you got Naviti, you got Malolo. So of course we're expecting that there's a lot of movement between the within the Yasawa Islands amongst themselves. So we don't we do expect that there will be positive cases. A team from the Ministry of Health is working with the Matanitikina and villages to assess and conduct contact tracing work in the village. Dr. Fong says no other case has been identified on the island to date. Chosayena Nunga, FBC News. The districts of Yale, Nakasaleka and Yawe in Kandavu have been classified COVID-19 hotspots with over 200 positive cases from these areas in recent days. Health Ministry's Chief Surgeon and FEMAT Clinical Lead in Kandavu, Dr. Chosese Turangava, says they've picked up over 300 cases so far and the numbers are expected to increase. Chosaya Nanunga reports screening and assessments have been completed in 65 villages and 18 settlements to date. Over the past two weeks, a good number of villages in Kandavu have voluntarily imposed lockdown protocols, reducing the risk of intermixing between villages. This period has also strengthened community spirit. I think there's a lot of community support. There's a lot of uh, friendship that is noted. And uh, I think uh, which is uh, really nice because you can see how the, um, the people are taking it as their own initiative. The government doesn't have to feed the patients. Uh, each of these is actually being looked after. The health officials are concerned with the district of Nakasaleka as people continue to be wandering around without a valid reason. Through uh, each of the villages and each of the settlements and those, uh, there are people who are still refusing to uh, that have uh, locked us out, which uh, probably is just probably about 5 to 10 percent, but we've been able to screen almost everybody in each of the villages and settlements. The Rokutui Kandavu is calling on Turangani Koros and community health workers to also assist social welfare recipients in their respective villages collect their vouchers or monthly allowance. This includes their vouchers, ID, vaccination card and the authorization third party letter. A village can each have a third party letter for its social welfare recipients and clearly outlining the names of the beneficiaries. This is an effort to ensure minimal people come into the government service center to receive the allowance of food vouchers. The collection of vouchers and letters will begin on Wednesday. Meanwhile, 255 individuals have recovered and were discharged, with five COVID-19 patients still admitted at the Wunise Hospital in stable condition. Chosaya Nanunga, FBC News. People in the Maritime Islands have been assured that food security will not be an issue as commercial vessels will continue to transport supplies in affected areas. 
Permanent Secretary for Health. Dr. James Fong says while these vessels are allowed to operate, traveling between islands on fiberglass boats is prohibited. Kelly Vadala reports. People on affected islands will have to wait on commercial vessels for supplies as fiber boat travel is putting lives at risk. Yeah, that was okay until uh, Kandawu got into trouble. Kandawu and Asawa. So now we are saying that both Kandawu and Asawa, you're not allowed to go They are restricted areas. If the people, well, I mean, essentially we are hoping that there will be common sense prevailing and everybody knows that they traveling to those islands will be a risk back to their uh, place. Eh? Permanent Secretary Dr. James Fong says there are COVID protocols in place for those traveling on fiber boats. We had allowed for some degree of fiber boats to come up to the shore. They give a shopping list and then they, somebody goes, buys the stuff and bring it back to them. That was okay. But for us, the problem was that people got off and they went into town, bought what they needed and then came back with the virus. Health teams together with village authorities have also been monitoring the movement of people between islands. Making sure that we continue to work uh, with the communities and uh, tighten that yeah. Police who are at the forefront of monitoring restrictions say that any travel has to be approved by PS Health and this includes fiber boat or by any other means. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. To tonight's COVID-19 update, Fiji recorded 128 new COVID-19 infections for the period ending 8 a.m. yesterday. 78 cases are from the West, 45 from the Central Division and 5 from the Eastern Division. There are 12 new COVID-19 death deaths rather, to report in the last 24-hour period. Fiji has recorded 47,923 cases since April this year. There are now 14,404 active cases with 32,728 recoveries. The COVID-19 death toll stands at 520. The vaccination campaign also continues. In the latest update, 566,285 people or 96.5% of the population have received their first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine. 300,039 people or 51.1% have received the second dose. The five most vaccinated areas are still Mba, Rewa, Nanonga and Naitasiri which have achieved 100% first jabs administered. Next is Nandi. And Segram and Lilawati of Yala Levumba are fully vaccinated. Have you received your jabs yet? Up ahead, Minister commends overseas health experts. And Fiji's constitution, a progressive one. Welcome back. Medical support and assistance provided during the pandemic has helped strengthen our health systems to continue the COVID-19 battle. Minister for Health Dr. Ifiremi Wanga Inambete says visiting teams from Australia and New Zealand have contributed tremendously in the areas of, rather, in giving expertise and helping health teams on the ground. Kelly Vadala reports. Majority of health systems were overwhelmed when COVID hit. As for Fiji, neighboring countries ensured we fight the virus together. Every equipment that we receive, every expertise that is provided our way, every uh, team that comes through OSMAT and ANZMAT together with New Zealand that comes and gives us expertise here is strengthening our health system. Dr. Feremi Wanganibeti says with our vaccination rate on track, the health system will definitely come back stronger. We sincerely hope that with this support that our health system, uh, as we move into, um, uh, you know, the lessening COVID will become even stronger than we were before COVID. Australian High Commissioner John Feig says Fiji's handling of COVID-19 has been recognised. So it's a testament not only to your leadership and, and Dr. Fong's, but also the tireless work of your ministry uh, employees and colleagues and all of the supporting actors. As of 4th September, 96.5% of adults have received their first dose of the vaccine and 51.1% are fully vaccinated. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. President Major General Chochi Kondrote, while announcing the winners of this year's Our Constitution Challenge, emphasized the importance of the Fijian Constitution. 
president says the constitution is one of the most progressive in the world as it enshrines a vast array of socio-economic rights. He says the most, like most other constitutions, it also enshrines political and civil rights, such as the right to vote and freedom of speech. With our economy battered by the global pandemic, my government's commitment to uphold that sacred right has been tested by a time of serious need across Fiji. And we are meeting the challenge with historic levels of support to the Fijian people. And uh, the winners of the four video and essay competitions will receive $500 each. A youth group from Nakasi Nosori was out on the streets of Suva today, providing food for the homeless in the hopes of making their Constitution Day a memorable one. The food distribution today was part of the group's continuous initiative to ensure that street dwellers are looked after during these tough times. Jeshulal reports. The president of the youth group says they are mobilizing whatever resources they have to help the homeless. When uh, we see homeless people sitting there, and then, but it's really heart melting as well, because there is no one for them, and uh, sometimes they just uh, they just feel like they they want to talk to us. The group has been assisting many homeless people during this pandemic, ensuring that they are also given the care they need. Uh, we have helped many people in lockdown, around 50 people. Many Fijians spend this Constitution Day with their families and in their own bubble. Constitution Day, I'm happy to spend it with my parents and my cousins. It's a normal day for us. It's not like a holiday. This Constitution Day, I spend it with my family. Like It's not like we celebrate like yes, uh, last year, but today is a normal day for us. The COVID-19 pandemic has affected a lot of celebration and Fijians are urged to practice safety measures to stay safe from the killer virus. Jeshulal, FBC News. The Fiji police force issued 263 public health infringement notices between September 4th and the 6th. Commissioner of Police Brigadier General City Gilio says of the total fins, 131 were for failure to wear proper face covering or face masks, 62 were issued for social gatherings and 58 for breaches of curfew. The Southern Division recorded the most infringements issued, followed by the West, East, Central and Northern Division. The Commissioner of Police adds other bookings included failure to wear a mask while traveling in a public service vehicle, failure to comply with orders with regards to consumption of liquor and kava, and failure to comply with 50% passenger capacity in PSV, PSVs. Police are reiterating that Fiji is not out of the woods yet and people must not be complacent. Ahead in sports, road to Birmingham, Rocky. And no rest for Vakasama. This and more coming up. Leading sports tonight, preparations for the upcoming Commonwealth Games is a major challenge for all participating sports with COVID protocols restricting athletes from training in their respective facilities. It's even more daunting for a number of team sports that will have to go through a qualifying stage to book a spot at the Games. Tailei Matairakula reports. The road to Birmingham is a lot tougher compared to the preparation done in 2018 for the Gold Coast Games. Difficulties we all will have in terms of preparation, you know, the, the difficulty in access to venues, uh, the difficulty in being able to travel for international competition, um, as well as training camps. A training bubble is in the cuts, and but it poses okay. its own challenges. But how do we get, say, athletics who need access to the tracks into one training bubble. They all live in different areas. Uh, they all probably either students or employees. So how do you get them all to come into one training camp? Beach volleyball is amongst the number of spots that will need to qualify, but the Federation is still doing its homework. Trying to put things together. Um, once the, the mainframe structure of 
uh, Fiji volleyball uh, is in place, then the uh, beach ball to be, to, will have a separate structure altogether uh, under the Fiji Beach Volleyball Commission. A total of 15 sports are set to compete for the Commonwealth Games with the national men's seventh team already booking its place. Tali Matirkula, FBC Sports. Bowls Fiji hopes to get a few warm-up matches before the Commonwealth Games in July next year. Plans were disrupted due to the pandemic, but hopes are still high for a few regional meets early next year. Tale Mataira again. Warm-up matches with regional rivals were in the cards, but things are uncertain. A couple of months ago, correspondents uh, from Australia, New Zealand and Norfolk Island federations wanting to come here on the way through to Birmingham and uh, I think it's March next year to play in the Commonwealth game and they wanted to have a competition with Fiji bowlers. If the plan does not happen as scheduled, bowls Fiji will improvise. I would still like for that to happen and I think we probably could do it as Fiji. Whether Australia and New Zealand and perhaps even indeed Norfolk Island are able to come next March, I'm uncertain. Affiliate clubs are working on getting things normalised. We will just have to go with what the government said about uh, vaccination. So if you don't get two jabs, then you won't be allowed at the club. But, uh, the message uh, is clear to everyone. Bowls Fiji is hoping to send a team of lawn bowlers for the qualifying tournament to the Commonwealth Games. Tali Terkula, FBC Sports. Olympian Taichi Vakasama is not taking any breaks as he prepares for various upcoming international competitions. The youngster is pushing on with training for the World Swimming Championship later this year and the Commonwealth Games next year. Vakasama says he is finding ways to keep fit while waiting for approval to be given for returning to the pool. So far, um, I am not, being, I'm not able to swim in a swimming pool due to this COVID outbreak. So I'm looking forward to get an approval later. But so far, I'm working on my body weight training since gym is not available as well. And also trying to stay fit so that when, by the time when I get back into the pool, I can get back to all those technique works. A weak trough of low pressure lies slow moving over the eastern parts of the group. Another weak trough of low pressure with cloud and showers expected to gradually drift south eastwards and affect the country by later tomorrow. Looking at the west, mainly, mainly fine rather, excuse me, apart from some cloudy conditions. Eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suva, cloudy periods with afternoon showers. In the north, fine apart from afternoon showers. At sea, northerly winds 10 to 15 knots, gusting to 20 knots over areas of heavy rain and thunderstorms, moderate to rough seas. Turning to the tides, the next low tide is at 11.17 tonight, with high tide at 5.40 a.m. Tomorrow, sunrise is at 6.10. For tomorrow, cloudy periods with some showers can be expected. And the outlook for Thursday, cloudy periods with some showers and isolated afternoon or evening thunderstorms over the eastern parts and the interior of the larger islands. And recapping our main stories, drowning of suspected COVID-19 case under investigation. More than 60 villages in Kandavu screened and assessed. And island hopping on fiberglass boats restricted. For these stories and others, tune in to our sister radio station Gold FM to our poll question. This week we are asking, will you get your child vaccinated when vaccines become available for those between the ages of 12 to 17? Visit our FPC News website to answer. And remember, send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email fpcnews at fpc.com.fj or share it with us via social media. You can also download our FPC app to keep updated with the very latest in news and sports and listen to our six radio stations live. That's your news this evening. I'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, stay safe. Mother Mother.